This is Willow Quantum Computer from Google. It solved a problem in minutes that would take regular supercomputers 10 septillion years. That is one followed by 25 zeros. Yep, that is longer than the age of our universe. This shows how powerful quantum technology can be. So, what comes next? Are we going to see laptops powered by quantum chips on sale at Best Buy? Well, that is not happening anytime soon. But don't undermine the quantum computers just yet. These big tech companies are not throwing billions into quantum research without a thought. Quantum computers are really good at performing complex calculations. I mean really well. But if these machines are so powerful, why can't we use them like regular computers? Let's find out. Think of regular computers as the Daniel. Then, the quantum computer is the cooler Daniel. We know it can tackle problems in minutes that would take regular supercomputers literally thousands of years. But how does it do that? Remember, you may have heard computers using 1 and 0 to process information. The microprocessor of the regular computer has billions of small transistors which can be turned on and off. When a transistor is on, the computer calls this a 1. And when it is off, the computer calls this a 0. This is how a regular computer calculates. It is basically a glorified light switch. But quantum computers use something called qubits like a fancy version of bits. These qubits are crazy because of weird quantum mechanical properties. They are not 0 or 1 at a time like regular bits. They are 1, 0 or something in between at the same time. Think of it like flipping a coin. Somehow it is both heads and tails at the same time. This is called quantum superposition and this is what allows quantum computers to explore countless possibilities all at once. To put it simply, it is like trying every combination on a Rubik's Cube at once instead of twisting it piece by piece. I know it is hard to wrap your heads around this. But wait, I have even more explaining to do. Entanglement. It is like a type of psychic connection between the quantum particles. If you do something to one particle, another particle immediately knows. And the weird part is the distance does not matter here. Even if the particles are galaxies apart, they instantly know. Einstein famously called it spooky action at a distance. And yeah, it's as weird as it sounds. But this weirdness is the secret sauce behind quantum computers' insane power. This works hand in hand with the superposition to give quantum computers the power to explore many possibilities at once. This all sounds plain and simple. But for years, quantum computers were just theoretical because making all of this work in real world is ridiculously hard. To make these qubits a reality, we have to make the system colder than outer space. And trust me, that is not an easy task. Even after that, these qubits are finicky. They can lose their quantum power with the slightest disturbance in the process called decoherence. Imagine you are juggling a soap bubble while trying to keep it intact. How hard is that? But we did not give up. In 2019, we proved quantum computers have an upper hand. Google announced its latest Scamore processor. It performed RCS tests in just 200 seconds that would take the fastest classical supercomputer approximately 10,000 years to complete. RCS or Random Circuit Sampling Test is a way to check if a quantum computer is really doing quantum stuff or it is just acting like a regular computer pretending to be quantum. Now we arrive at Google's newest machine, Willow. Willow was announced on December 9, 2024. It features 105 superconducting qubits in an architecture that allows for exponential error correction. Remember, quantum computers don't always provide the right answer in one go because qubit behavior is based on a probability. Oftentimes, we have to go through problems multiple times to confirm the result. These qubits are very sensitive to external factors. This adds up the error rate. That is where error correction comes in. Google has found a way to significantly reduce error rates as more qubits are added. This addresses a major challenge of error correction that has been lurking for years. Another impressive thing is this chip achieves a coherence time of around 100 microseconds. Coherence time is the time these qubits remain in a quantum state. No. 
quantum chips are not in a quantum state all the time. You may think 100 microseconds is a small time, but that is a 5 times improvement over the previous generations. And it can do a lot of things in those 100 microseconds. Willow's design also improves qubit connectivity, ensuring a stable connection, which enables it to handle complex tasks effectively while maintaining performance. China is not far behind with their newest chip called TNN504. One thing to note here is except the 504 qubit count, other specifications of this chip are not properly listed. But before we get too excited, we need to answer a big question. Will quantum computer replace your trusty old laptops? Quantum computers are not here to replace your laptop. These machines are built for entirely different job. Think of it like how you would not use a Ferrari to plow a field. Sure, quantum computers can do some things insanely fast, but they are not built to check emails or stream cat videos. I know you like cats. Even if they were, these computers need an absurdly specific environment to even work. Take Google's Willow. This thing operates at temperatures so cold that even penguins would pack up and leave. All this freezing is necessary to keep the qubit stable and free from outside interference. Compare that to your laptop which is more than happy to work at room temperature while you snack on chips and spill the crumbs on your keyboard. Quantum computers are also huge. Think of a massive server room filled with wires and gadgets that look straight out of a sci-fi movie. Meanwhile, your laptop is portable, runs on a battery, and does not need a team of scientists to keep it from crashing. But it's not just about size. Quantum computers have their own quirks. They are incredibly error-prone because qubits are ridiculously sensitive to their surroundings. Even tiny electromagnetic signals can mess things up. To fix this issue, quantum computers use complex error correction systems. On the other hand, your laptop's processor has decades of refinement under their belt, making them faster and reliable for everyday tasks. Quantum computers are like super-specialized tools. Say you need to simulate a molecule for new cancer drug. This task is really hard for our regular supercomputers. But quantum computers can simulate molecules better than anything we have today, potentially speeding up the development of new medicine or super-efficient materials. Traffic management is another problem. Want to optimize traffic patterns for an entire city? Just give it to a quantum computer. But for editing videos, sending texts, or playing games, stick with your laptop. While quantum computers won't replace laptop anytime soon, the AI they power in the future might revolutionize how we work, play, and communicate. Quantum computing is no longer just science fiction. It is solving some problems faster and better than traditional computers ever could. But it's also raising big questions. There are studies showing these machines can crack today's encryption really fast. So what do you think happen when quantum computers become more powerful? and more accessible? Let me know in the comments. For now, quantum computers are best at solving niche problems like simulating molecules or optimizing logistics. But they are far from being everyday device which everyone uses. The future, however, is a mix of promise and responsibility. Quantum tech could transform industries, tackle climate change, and supercharge AI. But with great power comes great headaches like keeping data safe in a quantum world. We are on the edge of something big here, from 10 septillion years to just a minute. Quantum computer is rewriting what's possible. Exciting, isn't it? Also a bit terrifying. If you like this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching.